Thank you, Robert. I am delighted to be here at our first in-person summit. And I'll come everyone, and I'm looking forward to meet as many of you over the next two days. In this talk, I will be making three simple points. The first is that distributed computing is inevitable. That is, we'll have no choice but to run more and more application on clusters, distributedly, instead of on a single node. Second, building distributed applications is hard, very hard. And the final point is that Ray and AnyScale are together the perfect solutions to address this problem by dramatically simplifying building distributed applications. Let me start with the first point. Distributed computing is inevitable. This trend has started decades ago and is just accelerating. 40 years ago, we built supercomputers to solve some of the hardest problems at that time, problems that are still hard today, like weather predictions, designing aircraft engines, and more. A decade later, the internet led to global scale backend systems to support the ever-growing web services and distribute more and more content, like data and, vid and video and audio over the internet. Then, at the turn of the century, we saw the emergence of the big data systems like MapReduce, Hadoop, and Spark that aim to process a huge amounts of data which are generated by these web services. And once these workloads went distributed, there was no coming back. They remained distributed. Finally, another decade later, in 2010s, it was a turn of AI and machine learning workloads to go distributed. The compute demands for training the state-of-the-art machine learning models have been increasing at a phenomenal rate. According to the most recent data, they have been increasing over 10 times every 18 months since 2010. Over the same time period, the compute capabilities of existing compute devices, including hardware, hardware accelerators like GPUs and DPUs, have less than doubled every 18 months. So this means that every 18 months, you need at least five times more devices, five times more node, to train the state-of-the-art machine learning models. The same holds true for memory, not only for compute. Just six years ago, the state-of-the-art machine learning models were fitting on a single GPU. Fast forward today, and fitting the state-of-the-art models requires thousands of GPUs. Now, even if models were stopped growing in size, it will still take decades before we can again put the largest models today on a single hardware accelerator. And this assumes that capabilities of the specialized hardware will continue to grow at the same pace, which is far from certain given the fundamental technological limitations. As such, we have absolutely no choice but to distribute these AI workloads. While distributed applications is a necessity, doing so is very hard. Indeed, it takes a team of experts many years to build systems for scaling just a single workload. Examples of such systems are Kafka for processing streams of data, of events, Spark, Hadoop, and Dask for data processing, Horovod, distributed uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch distributed for scaling very large neural networks. So why is this hard? Well, distributed systems are inherently far more complex than single node systems. In fact, they are some of the most complex systems built by humans. In a distributed setting, the developers and operators need to deal with and hide from the users node failures, slow and unreliable communication networks, the fact that nodes, the nodes have heterogeneous capabilities, and much more. In contrast, the developers do not need to deal with any of these challenges when building a single node system. But it's getting worse, as real applications are actually more complex. Consider a typical end-to-end -end machine learning pipeline like a recommendation system, right? So first here, we ingest some data, maybe pre-process it, then train a model based on this data, then 
tune the model to optimize it, and finally serve the model to provide users with some useful recommendations. The logs generated by the users are then used to augment the data and eventually train the models. So in summary, these applications need to do data ingestion, training, tuning, serving, and implement also business logic. Today, there is no single system that can scale all these workloads. So what do people do then? Well, one possibility is to build a new system from scratch to support these end-to-end -end applications. However, this is extremely hard and few companies in the world have resources to do so. The alternative is to take a bunch of existing systems, each of them scaling a particular workload, a particular stage, and in this pipeline, and stitch them together. Unfortunately, this approach also makes the development, deployment, and managing of the, of the management of this application hard. Indeed, to develop such an application, you would need to develop against different systems, each of them with its own API. Then, you need to deploy and manage these different systems, each with its own performance and fault tolerance characteristics. Finally, the, res the resulting system can be slow as each system might store the data in different formats. So you need to write and read the data to an external storage to just move the data between the stages. Our mission at any scale is to make scaling these complex applications easy. The holy grail here is to make developing distributed applications as easy as developing application on your laptop. This would enable virtually everyone, not only the Googles of the world, to reap the benefits of AI to transform their businesses. Ray makes a big step forward in realizing this mission by providing a single unified framework that supports all these workloads via an ecosystem of libraries like Ray Air that Robert mentioned earlier. Thus, instead of stitching together and managing these different distributed systems, you have a single system on top of which you can use a single program to implement your entire pipeline. And here are some quotes from Ray users to emphasize these points. The first quote is from Ant Group, which is one of the largest users of the open source Ray which basically says that they use Ray to scale a variety of workloads, including streaming, um, serving, and iterative calculations. And also for the past two years, Ant Group has deployed Ray-based services in production during W11, which as you probably know, is the largest shopping day in the world, bigger than the Black Friday. The second, code, uh, the second quote is coming from Travis Adair, the core of our creator, and it echoes the benefit of using Ray as a unified platform. By leveraging Ray, he says, we combine the pre-processing, distributed training, and high-parameter search, all within a single job running a single training script. While Ray makes developing a distributed application easier, any scale goes one step farther. Any scale provides a fully hosted service and it provides tools to make it even easier to develop, deploy, and, deploy and manage the application. Without thinking about infrastructure, that's just like you are not thinking about infrastructure when you are developing on your own laptop. In addition, Ray and AnyScale integrates virtually with any libraries uh, in the machine learning ecosystem. To better understand AnyScale value, consider the requirements of the main constituents. On one hand, if you are a developer, what you care about is to improve your productivity. In addition, you want a system that does not put any constraints on what libraries and tools you can use, especially in such a fast-moving field like AI. On the, other, on the other hand, if you put your organization cap on, you want fast time to market, low cost of ownership, and, of course, security. Now, let us take a look at how Ray addresses the developer's requirements. First, Ray improves the develop, developer productivity as it simplifies building end-to-end -end applications. Like we discussed, there is no need to stitch together these disparate systems. Just use Ray to support all your distributed workloads. Second, Ray provides auto-scaling out of the box and a sophisticated dashboard that helps users to troubleshoot the performance and correctness issues uh, in their applications. Finally, since 
it is Python native and provides the REST API, Ray already supports integration with many popular libraries, including TensorFlow, PyTorch, Airflow, MFlow, and many more. So what does AnyScale provide in addition to Ray? To Ray? Well, AnyScale manages clusters, so developers do not need to worry about the infrastructures. Next, it, it further improves the productivity by providing a laptop-like development experience and by making it easy to move your application from development to production and by boosting observability um, with historical performance metrics and out-of-the-box integrations with some observability platforms like Grafana. Finally, AnyScale provides native integrations with development and MLOps tools such as weight and biases and arise. We package all these features in what we call workspaces, which we are very excited to announce today. Workspaces manage the entire application life cycles. With workspaces, you can start developing on your laptop, then move to a cluster to further test and debug, and you can do this with virtually no code changes. Finally, once your application is tested, you can move it from development to production again with virtually no code changes. In summary, Workspaces allows everyone to develop on their laptop and seamlessly scale to the cloud and to production. So here is a screenshot of the Workspaces. As you can, as you can see, um, you can choose your favorite development tools, including Jupyter Notebooks, Visual Code, or even a Unix terminal. Um, and at the same time, Workspaces enables you to clone and share your workspaces with other developers or with de DevOps engineers in your organization to deploy your applications in production. This way, Workspaces not only enables you to develop on your laptop and move seamlessly your code to the cluster, but once on a cluster, it provides you with the same laptop experience. So here is some feedback from our workspace users. Both codes speaks about the increase in productivity. In the first code, an ML researcher says that workspaces allows her to go from development, experimentation, and deployment to production, and in doing so, it reduces the context switches by 50%. In the second quote, an open source machine learning developer says that Workspaces makes her 3x more productive by allowing end-to-end -end development and effortless scaling. This quote also mentioned the convenience of native integration with weight and biases. Finally, let us consider the requirements of the organizations. Workspaces go a long way to improve the time to market by improving the developer productivity, which helps complete projects faster, and in addition, AnyScale provides jobs and services which allow users to reliably run pipelines and deploy model serving in production. When it comes to reducing the cost of ownership, AnyScale provides support for spot instances and cost management by tracking the cloud cost on a per job basis in real time. Oops. Finally, any scale provide security, strong security um, features. It allows you to contain your network traffic by allowing you to run any scale in your virtual private cloud. And in addition, it provides you with access control features. As well, it enables you to run your own dockers and you run predefined environments with just a, of a click of a button. So next, please join me to welcome back again Robert Nishihara, the co-founder and CEO of AnyScale, who will demo how AnyScale and Ray can tremendously simplify building an end-to-end -end machine learning applications. Thank you. Okay.